one, two. Oh, leads and focus. Okay, that'll do. Hey guys, what's up? Scott Devine here from scottsbasslessons.com. Hope everybody's having a wicked day out there. I know we are here, well, me and George over there. A really common question that crops up time and time again uh, from my personal students that are studying with me over at, uh, at scottsbasslessons.com um, is the five string thing, right? Should you play a five string? If so, why should you play a five string? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five reasons that you should play a five string bass, but I'm gonna back that up and give you five reasons why you shouldn't play a five string bass as well, okay? So you ready for it? Let's get into it. So the first reason why you should play a five string bass is because of the lower extended range. You may or may not know it, but having lower notes has more function than you you might think straight off the bat, right? So you might just think, oh yeah, looks cool, I've got five strings, but it really does have a function, okay? And a great example of this is that songs that are in the key of E flat or D or D flat, right? Those songs, particularly E flat, like Superstition by Stevie Wonder, That is a great example of a song that just really doesn't feel that great playing on a four string because that's your lowest root note right there. That E flat there on a four string. You know, it doesn't feel that low in the mix. So, and on the original, it's actually, it's that E flat down there. And again, if, uh, if we took a tune in the key of D, say like D minor, for instance, just having that. The second reason why you should think about playing a five string bass is that some gigs, it's just, it's a must to have a five string bass and having a four string won't cut it. So for instance, for the, a lot of the theatre work that I've done, where I'll be playing musicals um, and, and shows and that type of thing, like the parts, the bass parts are written for five string bass and it will not cut the mustard if you turn up and just say, hey, I've just got a four string, you're gonna have to lump it. You are expected to be able to play that bass part as written and most of them are written for five string bass. The third reason that you might think about playing the five string is because you can actually shift a little bit more efficiently on it. So instead of going down the way, you can actually go just across the way. In fact, a piece I was playing the other day had a... Now, if I was doing that on a four string bass, I would finger it like a... Like that. Which is cool, you know, I can do it. In fact, I did it on that gig. I was playing a four string bass, but if I had a five string, it's kind of right there under the hand. So efficient shifting, if you're using your five string correctly, which we'll get onto, efficient shifting is something that the five, the five string can bring to the, uh, can bring it to the party. The fourth reason why you should think about playing a five string is that if you're playing with a, an instrument that is tuning down, so let's take um, a guitar player for instance. So Stevie Ray Vaughan, tuned down to E flat. Jimi Hendrix, tuned down to E flat. Me as a bass player, I don't want to turn up to a gig and have to, you know, the, for the guitar player to say, hey, I tuned down to E flat and then I have to tune down to E flat. I want to just be like, okay, he's tuned to E flat, but I've got E flat right there. So 
So it is advantageous if you're playing with instruments that do tune down because in a nutshell it means you don't have to tune down and you still understand where all the notes are on the neck. Because as soon as you start tuning down, well then you just have no idea what notes are which and it just gets far too complicated. We want to keep things easy, right? Now the fifth reason you'd want to play a five string is because of transposing. Some songs, when you transpose them out of their original key, especially if they're riff based, just sound really, really weird if you can't get the lower register within the riff. A great example of this transposing thing and how five string can you know, help you out in a lot of ways when it comes to transposing riffs is I Wish by Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Now, the original riff is in E flat. It's in E flat, but I'm hitting that low minor third, that G flat. For me, I turned up on a gig, we had a singer, it was a, a female singer, and she wanted to do it in the key of C, right? So that's great if you're going, you've got, you haven't got that low note. You haven't got the E flat. You need that low E flat to play it in C. Now you could play it here. It just sounds weird, right? Or you could just play it. But again, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> this is where five, can, five string can really help out because you could just play the original riff in C. So there are all the reasons why you should think about playing a five string bass. Now remember, I don't play a five string bass. I do have a five string bass just in case I get called for a gig that needs one or I'm working with somebody who particularly wants one, but a four string bass is where I feel most at home. Now with that in mind, let me talk about five reasons why you shouldn't play the five string bass. So the first reason you shouldn't play a five string bass is that if, if for any reason you think it is the natural progression of a bass player, as in, you know, as you get better, you transition from a four string to a five string, start on a four string, then move to a five string, and then, hey, let's go to a six string. That's just not the case, okay? The B string is there as a functioning tool within, within all the strings, okay? It's got nothing to do with being a beginner or intermediate or advanced, okay? If you want to play a five string now, play a five string. If you want to play a four string, well, it was okay for Jaco Pistorius, it was okay for uh, Jeff Andrews, and it was okay for a multitude of absolutely killing bass players. It's okay for you too. You don't need to feel like just because you're getting better, you need to transition to a five string. The second reason why you shouldn't play a five string bass is that muting that B string, this here B string, is an issue. I'm not saying don't play a five string because of that muting issue that you're going to have to deal with because that's exactly what you'll do. You'll deal with it, you'll learn how to get around it and you'll alter your technique to deal with it, okay, to, to mute it effectively. But what I am saying is if you are not going to put the work into dealing with that, B string, if you're not going to put the work in and the practice and the grunt work that's going to get be needed when you first transition to the five string bass, then just don't play a five string bass. So for instance, when I'm playing a five string, I use my thumb and lean it against, can you see that? I lean it against the B string. So when I'm playing these top strings, that's muted. It's not doing that, it's muted by the back of my thumb. It's absolutely essential to be able to do that in some form or another. Some people have other ways of doing it, but you need to do it. You can't turn up at a session and be playing a bass line, and then when they solo it, you've just got these like rumbling B string, because that if you're just going, okay. 
to be muting that effectively. So make sure you're going to put the practice in to mute that string effectively. If not, don't move to a five string bass. So the next one guys is for you guys that have a B string on your bass and don't use it. Uh, unfortunately, I know I'm calling you out. Um, there's a ton of bass players who have five string basses and when they look down, they just pretty much ignore the B string and don't use it. It's not integrated into what they do at all. It's like a very long thumb rest, right? That causes muting problems when they play down here, right? If you're not actively trying to get this B string into your playing, if you're just ignoring it and using it as a, um, a very extended long thumb rest, then just go back to a four string. You'll save yourself a heap of problems with muting and, and four strings are great. Hey guys, so this is like a quick interlude in the video. Um, I'm editing it right now. In fact, let me just grab my laptop. So here I am editing the video that you're watching right now. It's like super late, my kids are in bed, which is why I'm whispering. Obviously I'm supposed to be telling you guys the five reasons why you should play a better five string bass and the five reasons why you shouldn't. I just realized I only gave you four reasons why you shouldn't. So I thought, oh, I could go to the studio tomorrow and try and wear the same stuff and I was a bit fooey to it. I just thought, I'll record a little interlude for you and, uh, and, and this can be your number four, why you shouldn't play a five string bass. But while I've got you, let me know in the comments why you think you should or shouldn't play a five string bass, okay? Let me know in the comments why you should or shouldn't play a five string bass. Anyway, back to editing and here comes number five. So last but not least guys, and this is kind of encapsulating the last four points that I've raised, is don't play or don't think about playing a five string bass if you're not willing to accept that there's gonna be a pretty big learning curve to it and a bit of practice, a lot of practice that will need to go in to really make you a five string player. Some tips for you, and one, in fact, one cool, really cool tip that somebody told me a long time ago is just take the riffs that you already know. So let's say for instance, um, uh, okay, blame it on the boogie, right? Okay, if I was learning how to play five string bass again and really trying to integrate this B string into my knowledge and, and learn all the notes on it, I'd be playing this up here and I'd be forcing myself to do it. It would feel uncomfortable and it will feel uncomfortable for you to start with, but unless you do that, you're never going to get it down. You're never going to truly be a five string player. And I think that's the key guys. Don't be a four string player playing a five string, right? If you want to play a five string, be a five string player and really commit to it. If you want to play, really play a five string, you've got to stop playing a four string for a while. Don't be going between the two because it's never going to happen. You're always going to be visualizing the four strings with this extra added B string, right? And you're always going to see it like that. Get rid of that four string, put it in the cupboard, put it under the bed, whatever you want to do for now, really commit to the five string if you want to be a five string player. If you think you want all of the, the things, the advantages that a five string bring to the table, okay, put the four string under the bed in the cupboard and really commit to that five string because otherwise you're never going to get it into your plane in a real meaningful and solid way. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed to this channel, obviously. And uh, and if you really like what I do and, and what Scott's Bass Lessons is doing, check out the uh, membership at scottsbasslessons.com because it is the, uh, it's the ultimate online school uh, for bass players in the world. And you can grab a 14 day free trial and just check it out. Come and hang out with me in the forums and, uh, and hopefully you'll help me get your bass playing to the next level. Now, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. Bye. 
Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scots Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14 day free trial over there.